It's 2018 and we're at World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin and it's my great pleasure to be with Jerry Strandlin, this year's National Dairy Shrine pioneer and truly a great leader in the industry. Congratulations. Thank you, Dave, and it's uh, my pleasure. I'm, I was very humbled and honored the morning you called to tell me that I had received this award and it's indeed uh, a great honor for sure. Well, every, uh, every great pioneer has a story that starts, and your starts in Minnesota, right? That's correct. In northern, uh, north central Minnesota, a town called Mora, Minnesota, Kennebec County, and uh, we started out, uh, my dad had a commercial herd, 19 cows, and that's where I originated from. And uh, your career started then, and you got to work at the University of Minnesota, and that really opened some doors for you, didn't, didn't it? Well, yes. As a student at the University of Minnesota, in order to to help pay my way through college, I worked uh, uh, dur during the uh, college uh, during the course of college. I worked at the uh, uh, dairy farm, milking cows, you know, 15, 18 hours a week, and uh, then during my summer months. Uh, I worked at uh, various farms around the United States, uh, purebred Holstein farms. Well, you got involved really with herds that were big on the show string, and yeah. a lot of people today don't understand the, the use of a boxcar and how this went. Why don't you describe a little bit of what a summer was like? Yes, well, that uh, in 1959, I uh, traveled 5,000 miles in a boxcar with the uh, Carnation Farm show herd. Al Hay was the showman then. He'd been there for 35 years about uh, at that time. And uh, so we had a, quite a tour of the West and uh, the Midwest. We, that summer we started out uh, in Salt Lake City, Utah. At the Utah State Fair, there was a uh, regional Holstein show there. And from there, we went on to Waterloo the first week in October, of course, to the National Dairy Cattle Congress show. From there, we went back to uh, Portland, Oregon, to the Pacific International Livestock Show. That was a big show then. It's been discontin discontinued since then. From there, we went down to the Cow Palace. And that was the end. By that time, it was about a week before Thanksgiving, and we came home. So that was quite a tour. We had 12 animals in the boxcar. Um, uh, let's see, 11 females and one bull. The bull would have been Carnation Royal Master, who was All-American uh, two-year-old that year. And we had with us that year also the All-American H cow, Texal Richard Lilly, who was an H cow, and a magnificent cow to show. And uh, I remember uh, one night they, at Waterloo, um, each evening they had a parade, or at the end of the show, they had a parade of champions like you do here at Madison. And Al Hay let me lead uh, Texel Richard Lilly out in the ring with the other breed champions. And about that time, the Brown Swiss people were yodeling and playing there or doing their thing with the bells too. And anyway, it was quite a, quite a show. Well, that uh, opened a lot of doors for you and you ultimately started a career uh, uh, shortly after that. And Tell us about the start of your life in the, in the business side. Well, okay, in the business side, after, well, I had worked then for Carnation, but I worked also for Piney Hill Farm one summer and Elmwood Farm at Lake Forest, Illinois, which were big farms in those days. Uh, I graduated in December of 1961. January of 1962, I started work for a prominent Ayrshire herd in Minnesota. Uh, owned by a retired medical doctor, Dr. R.B. Graves, at Red Wing, Minnesota. And his farm was uh, called M More Air Farm, M-O-R-A-Y-R. -R -R. And I was herd manager there for three and a half years. 
at which time uh, my boss, Dr. Graves, had he had bad health, and for health reasons we had a dispersal, and uh, and that was the end of kind of my cow management years. But uh, during those years, uh, we bred uh, the highest classified air fryer of all time. She still is today, 97.2 points. Uh, she was sold in our sale as a yearling heifer. She was All-American Junior Yearling uh, the year before our sale. At our sale she sold and then she went on for greater achievements. Uh, she would be grand here one year. Uh, the folks who bought her uh, Meredith farm uh, ended up with her at our sale and, and developed her, her career. Um, but we also uh, at this, at the first show here at Madison, the Grand Champion Ayrshire came from Moore Air Farm. She was purchased by Henry Bartell, a famous Holstein breeder at the time, Sonny Bartell's dad, and that would have been 1965 that he bought her on our sale, uh, but then he showed her in 1967 here, and so I have a little connection to, to the show through that route, but then from there, I went on to uh, to become uh, National Holstein Fieldman for seven Northwest states, which included Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, Montana, Colorado, and Wyoming at that time. I, will, I was uh, employed by the Holstein Association for about four years, and then I went on to become ad manager for all West breeders at Burlington, Washington who are now part of the Select Sires group. And after that, uh, I started my own business, uh, my own cattle photography business called Bulbagraph. And for 25 some years, I took f uh, professional cow photos in, in the West and British Columbia. And uh, the rest is, yeah, no, oh yes, and then, uh, took over a magazine called Northwest Holstein News. Lindy Ketcher in California had started that magazine a couple years earlier. I took it over in 1976. Uh, uh, and so I'm still doing the Northwest Holstein News. It's kind of dwindled down to to a ma one major issue a year. Uh, but in the interim, during those years, I also did a publication called Western Jersey News for a couple years and began a publication that's still uh, going uh, uh, British Columbia Holstein News. Well, you've had a, a lot of chance to impact a lot of breeders over the years, and uh, you're truly beloved in the state of Washington and yeah. into British Columbia. So there are a lot of people that respect you that you've helped along the way. Yes, I've, 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 take, I've taken pictures uh, of grand, of uh, cattle owned by grandsons of people that I took pictures of 40 years ago, or 50 years ago. Uh, and for, uh, a little unique thing with my publication, over the years I have actually kept all of the negatives of the people pictures that I took. So I'm able now to go back in my files and include in my annual issue a couple of pages of what I call uh, oldies but goodies, which are pictures of people that I took pictures of 50 years ago and 40 years ago. And a lot of my readers, that's the first two pages they head to, is to look for those pictures. Uh, well, Jerry, you, uh, you have a loving wife and you've got uh some things you might want to talk a little bit about your family. Yes, my, we don't have any kids, but my wife of 44 years, she was a big, big help uh, in the earlier years. She did all of, our, all of the dark room work and uh, was a big help with keeping records and, and keeping track of things. And uh, a little humorous incident that happened, although it wasn't so humorous at the time. Early on, <clears throat> She was a good cow spook, and as you know, it's hard to find people to spook cows to get their ears up. 
Well, early on she was helping me out as we go out and set up and do cow pictures. We were over in Idaho one afternoon on, uh, on a beautiful field of alfalfa. And as you know, in Idaho, they raise wonderful hay and the fields are level. And we were out, and out doing pictures and of course I was telling her like we do, to go back further to make more noise and so on. So I said, go back further, back further. Pretty soon there was a big splash. Well, she fell in an irrigation ditch. Well, that about ended my pioneering as we would know it. <laughs> but <clears throat> the next day everything was all right. But the boys started laughing and snickering around holding the cows and so on. But that was, uh, was uh, funny at the time, but not so funny. But yes, my wife has been very helpful and and put up with me because I was gone a lot during those years, traveling and uh, and so on. So uh, she's been a big part of my career for sure. Well, it's been a great pleasure to visit with you today. Uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity. You are an icon in the Pacific Northwest. Congratulations yeah. again, Jerry Thank Strand. you, Dave. And thank you for Derry Shrine to bestow this honorary degree on me. It's uh, certainly will be remembered always. Thank you.